طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. So last time we talked about uh, radio resource management and uh, 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 we actually discussed a simple scenario where we have the base station and two users and we said that even for this simple scenario that we have uh, uh, complicated kind of mathematical derivation um, and we can uh, uh, re uh, allocate the frequency channel or the, fre the frequency resources based on um, the maximum throughput, the maximum aggregate throughput. And based on that, we have reached um, the maximum throughput, which I think was, I don't want to switch back, but uh, <clears throat> the maximum throughput was uh, around 345 or something like that. And we said that when we maximize the, um, the aggregate throughput, this is not necessarily the best thing because if we have a user who has who has bad channel, this user will, will be jeopardized, always jeopardized, because we want to maximize, we want to maximize the aggregate throughput. So what we do is that we always allocate the channel to, uh, or we always allocate in that case, we always allocate the, uh, uh, the power to the user who can give us the best throughput which is technically the user who has the, 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 the best channel. So this means that the other user is kind of a jeopardized or it's, he is in a very bad or disadvantages, uh, disadvantages situation. So in other words, we allocate the resources opportunistically. Whoever will give us the maximum throughput will give him the resources. So this is a... You can call it like a mean way of, uh, of allocating resources to users. Because just the fact that I'm, uh, I'm a user with bad channel doesn't mean that you know, I'm, I get ignored. So another way is to, uh, is, to ha is to allocate the resources in such a way that will give us maximum fairness. And by maximum fairness here, we mean that we are trying to maximize the throughput, right? But here, instead, what we do is that we look for the user with the minimum, with the, with the worst channel, and we try to maximize that user. So what we're trying to do here is that even though the users, they have very good channel and very bad channel, right? But we try to lower this gap when we allocate the resources. So the user with minimum, who's supposed to get the minimum uh, 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 resources, we will try to maximize him so that the difference between the one with the best channel and the minimum channel or the, the, the worst channel will be will be kind of shrunk. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because before what we try to do is to maximize the throughput, which means that the guy with the with the worst channel will get almost no resources. Okay? So the gap between the best and the worst will be very, very large because we're trying to be opportunistic. Mm -hmm. With max min, we're trying to maximize the minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay? So yeah. the guy with the minimum throughput will try to maximize that so that the gap between the best and the worst becomes, becomes a uh, small. So the weak user has a better chance in that case. So the weak user has a better chance in, in that case to get a better throughput. Mm -hmm. But this will be at the expense of lower throughput for the strong user. So the strong user in that case will not get the, uh, the maximum share of throughput, in which case we will actually drop uh, uh, from the maximum aggregate throughput that we have achieved before. But here we will get definitely much better fairness criteria in the users. All right, so, so maximum fairness will give us the best Fair, so go to next slide. So maximum, so uh, maximum throughput will give us the uh, the uh, uh, the best aggregate throughput, and minimum uh, maximum fairness will give us the best fairness. Um, so utility-based resource allocation tries to achieve the trade-off between the two that um, <clears throat> we're trying to uh, address the trade-off between the spectral efficiency and fairness. So we need to incorporate now the maximum aggregate throughput with some fairness criteria so that we can achieve 
the, uh, 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 the trade-off between the two. And the basic idea here is to map the resource usage, um, whether it's bandwidth or power or performance criteria, into a corresponding utility function. This utility function will take into consideration this trade-off. And we'll see some example of this utility function. So the utility function is defined in such a way that takes into consideration the bandwidth and the power. And so in the maximum, in the maximum aggregate throughput, we try to maximize the aggregate rate, right? That's it. Here, we will, try to make, we, we will not try to maximize the rate as straightforward function. We'll try to maximize a function of the rate mm -hmm. so that this function will implicitly take into consideration some fairness criteria, all right? So the utility function, <coughs> next. So the utility function are used to quantify the benefits of usage of certain resources. Okay, the benefit, yes. not, not like uh, in absolute term, the rate, because maximizing the aggregate uh, throughput, we are trying to maximize the rate directly. Here, we're trying to estimate quantitatively, not the rate, we're trying to estimate the benefit of having this rate. Because when we think in the position of the user, sometimes when I give you a specific rate, that doesn't mean that you are satisfied or something like that. So I'm trying to measure your level of satisfaction if I give you this rate. So this utility function needs to take into consideration not the absolute rate, but the benefit of giving this rate. Okay? And in calculating this benefit, okay, I can incorporate some fairness criteria. Um, so basically what we do here is that we, uh, 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 we can define a utility function which is ui of xi. xi here is the resource. So xi here is the resource. This resource could be a, a channel, could be specific frequency or power or something like that. Okay or data rate, or anything like this. Um, and then the utility is a function of this resource, is a function of assigning this resource to a particular user. Mm -hmm. So I here, it doesn't have to be one-to-one uh, -one with the resource. I here could refer to the user. So a user, in that case it would be U, مثلا, J. So uj of xi. So xi here could be a vector of resources. So the i, <coughs> you mean? I the refers to the amount, the, the number of resources, mm -hmm. I here refers to a specific resource. Uh, so if I assign this resource to the user, okay, and this resource could be a channel, could be a time slot, could mm -hmm. be anything, a specific delay, a specific rate, uh, anything. If I assign that to the user, what will be the benefit or the, the level of satisfaction of that user? Okay. okay, so to understand this a little bit better, let's talk about an example. So, <clears throat> next. So, so here, the objective is that instead of, instead of saying maximize the aggregate rate uh, or RI, here we're saying the maximize UI of RI. Okay. So an example, an example of this could be that UI <coughs> is log two of RI. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of maximizing RI, which is what we did last time, mm -hmm. we will we will maximize log RI, and this will give us proportional fairness. How? So basically. What we're trying to say here is that, so imagine if, uh, if we have Ri, so log Ri, log 2 of Ri, mm -hmm. here, when, if, when Ri is 1, it's 0, and the log kind of increases, but 
linearly at the beginning, but then kind of saturates, right? And then in the negative side, it will be like this. So this is the logarithmic function, right? So this is the logarithmic function. So it's not linear. So what does this imply? This implies that if, if I give a, a lower rate for the user, okay, in this region, the, the more resources I give to the user, the, the benefit will increase faster. Okay? As, as the rate increases, the benefit of giving that rate will start to, eat, to shrink a little bit. It becomes almost constant. Because the logarithmic function, you know the logarithmic function is something like this. Yeah. So it's, it's not linear. Mm -hmm. Like if I tell you ui equals ri, this means that when ri increases, the benefit increases. It's linear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when ui equals log ri, this means that when ri is in this region, the benefit, the benefit, increases linearly almost. But when Ri becomes a little bit high, the benefit starts to, a, the benefit starts to, the, the increase in the benefit starts to shrink. Mm -hmm. So this tells you that this tries to have the base station kind of discouraged to give the resources opportunistically to the user. Because if I give the resources opportunistically to the user, then his rate will, a, will increase, will start to increase and increase and increase. But with the log Ri, this will make the benefit of assigning this rate not increase with the same speed. Or sort of, you know, it does not increase linearly. After that point, it, After a point, it starts to, yes, it's marginal. So when I give you, when I give you, Masalan, from when I jump, when I give you masalan, a rate of 30, the benefit becomes 30. When I give you a rate of 40, the benefit becomes 38. Mm -hmm. When I give you a rate of 100, okay, the benefit becomes 42. Okay? So this will discourage the base station of giving all the resources to one user, mm -hmm. right? When I give the resources to this user, the benefit that I'm getting tends to shrink over time. So this will allow me to kind of a shift a little bit of these resources to other users. Because if I give it to other users, these users have small rate. And when, when, when they have small rate, the benefit increases faster. So, so you got the, 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 the philosophy behind. And just by having this logarithmic function, you can uh, actually provide what they call proportional fairness. So it's not, it's not totally um, opportunistic. And it's not as fair as round robin. Mm. Remember, because here we're still trying to increase RI, but not straight RI. We're trying to, to, to increase the, the logarithm of RI. Mm. Okay, so we, we still have some compromise between the fairness and maximizing the aggregate uh, throughput. Okay, so this, this, uh, this is one of the things that you can try in, 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 in the project. And I will talk to you about another, another uh, uh, utility, which can actually uh, be re really nice um, in TDMA systems and things like that. Okay, so this is, this is an example of a function that we can use. So instead of, so the same problem that we talked about before, we can allocate, uh, we can allocate the power. Remember in the previous, uh, in the previous scenario, we have, we have a power budget, and we're trying to allocate this power budget between two users. Okay, so um, if we do that uh, uh, using the logarithm, we will definitely get less aggregate throughput, less than what we got before if we were to remove the logarithm. Here, we will try to 
uh, force the base station to provide some fairness between user one and user two, even if the change in the, in the channel state between uh, user one and two is high. So we will try to have some uh, proportional fairness. Mm -hmm. So proportional fairness, it's a trade-off between two extremes. One extreme is to allocate the resources based solely on maximizing the aggregate throughput. Another extreme, which is based on the fact that we would be totally fair, which is like round robin or maximum fairness, okay? And proportional fairness talks about somewhere in between, where we use a utility function to provide proportional fairness. So it's a trade-off between the two. Mm -hmm. So choosing, um, so next slide. So choosing ui equals log two of ri will give us proportional fairness for free, because it tries to maintain a balance between two competing interests. One is maximizing the network throughput, and two is allowing a minimum quality of service to all users, mm -hmm. which is the, any, the benefit. The benefit. This can be any function, no? this utility function. This is utility function, but you have to be careful. Uh, there are some uh, things that you need to keep in mind when you select this function. One of them is uh, 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 whether or not this function will give you some fairness criteria into it, mm -hmm. which means that how do you actually quantify this benefit? Okay, so in a way, this multi-objective uh, uh, problem that Ala uh, tried in his work, and you are actually kind of using it, uh, this is a, a kind of utility function. This is a kind of utility function, okay? Um, the other thing that you need to, 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 to be aware of is that I can actually define this utility function in such a way that will make the problem non-convex. Remember we talked about convexity as you know a condition for us to be able to use optimization mm -hmm. so uh, <clears throat> if i define this utility function and this utility function is non convex then the optimization problem will not be will not be tractable at least directly mm -hmm. but the good news is this uh, logarithm uh, thing will not affect the convexity of the optimization problem in any way because because a logarithm is a convex function. And a logarithm of any function that's convex is convex. Okay? Well, this is what's good about using the utility function this way, which is the logarithm. Of course, we will talk about another utility function in a few minutes. Okay, so next slide. All right, so, so factors used when we allocate the resources. So we can use multiple factors when we allocate the resource. So imagine that we are <clears throat> in a TDMA system. So the previous one, we have one channel, and we just allocate the power. OK? Mm -hmm. So this one was not a TDMA system in a way, right? But imagine that we are in a TDMA system mm -hmm. now. So we have a base station, and we have multiple users. So we need to allocate the resource. Okay, at every single time slot, right? So at every single time slot, you need to decide whether to give the channel to this user or this user or this user or this user, mm -hmm. all right? So based on what? Well, if it's based on maximizing the aggregate, aggregate throughput, which is what we have done before, then it's actually easier in that case because what you do is that you can get the channel information for all the users, and the user with the best channel at this point in time will take it. So that's why one of the very important factors of allocating these resources is the, is the channel information of that user. Mm -hmm. In the previous example, we have taken channel information into consideration when we talked about the gain, right? Mm -hmm. When we talked about the gain, we have taken the channel information into consideration. But for TDMA, system, you have to do that at every time slot. So at every time slot, you will have to say whether I allocate this time slot to this user or this user or this user. That's a, a type of resource, uh, resource allocation, right? So in that case, we, will not we are not allocating the power budget. The power is, is the same, but we're trying to allocate the time slot to a specific user. That's another uh, uh, type of resource allocation. Right? So when we allocate this uh, resources to the users, 
we need to take into consideration, for example, the channel information. Mm -hmm. So if I take into consideration the, the channel information, is this good or bad? Well, it depends. If you try to use that opportunistically, then you may end up with a very interesting situation. The user with the best channel will get these resources all the time, all the time. So the first time slot, this user is the best, give it to him. Next time slot, this user is the best, give it to him. So what will happen? All the other users will be starving. And this user will always get the maximum share of resources, which is not fair. Okay, so what we could do in that case is, uh, uh, is to allocate the number of resources using utility function, just like we did before. And we'll talk about an example that we can do that for the case of TDMA as well. Another factor that we, took in, that we can take into consideration when we talk about allocating the resources is, is the uh, state of user's queue. Why? Because, again, if I allocate solely based on the channel state... Maybe we have a good channel, but we have nothing to send. Exactly. So this guy has a good channel, but he has nothing to send. His traffic is very light. Mm -hmm. Whereas there is another guy who has like multimedia communication and his queue is, is that jammed with lots of packets mm -hmm. because he's trying to send multimedia, multimedia application and his queue is like this and I'm not giving him any opportunity because I'm trying to be opportunistic. Well, this is not accurate in that case. So another factor is, to, is, is maybe I should allocate the resource to the one with the maximum length of queue that is currently happening. Which means that I'm trying, I'm trying to be conservative, okay? That uh, uh, these, the, the ones, the users with the, with the biggest size of queue, I give the resource to him. So I'm trying to balance out the, the queue length across the users, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm trying over time to, to balance out the queue state of all the users. The one with the maximum, I give it to him. So when I give it to him, he actually empties his queue. Yeah. Next time, if he does not have the same rate of traffic, maybe the size of another one will be higher, in which case I will give it to him, and so on. So over time, I should maintain the queue state on all the users to be almost the same, okay? So the queue, or, well, this is a very good example that I can define a, a, a utility function which takes into consideration both these factors. <clears throat> okay? So I can, I can select to uh, 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 assign the resource based on the channel state or assign the resource based on the queue or a combination between the two which is a utility function. And then I can give more importance to one over the other based on what I want, okay? Other factors could be interference to other users or networks. So in that case, I'm not assigning the resource based on channel state only or queue state. I'm trying to assess if that user sends at this point, he will interfere with other users, okay? He will cause more interference to other users. So I don't only care about the throughput that is coming from that user. I'm trying to assess the effect if that user sends on the other users. But if there is TDMA, like only one user... Yeah, but TDMA is still, is still when you send. Yeah, when you send, that doesn't mean that you will have no interference. With other base stations. Yeah, but other base stations, probably. It's up to Right? So if a, user, if a user, for example, on the boundary of the cell, okay, this user, if he tries to send, he will cause interference to other cells and other users in the other cell. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these boundary users, I should serve carefully. Okay? Is this TDMA? All, all we are talking about is only of TDMA or this is applicable for TDMA also? Anything. The, it's the same thing. So when you, when, you, when you allocate the resources for CDMA or for, what are the resources in CDMA? Well, codes, mm -hmm. I can allocate the codes, mm -hmm. okay? For FDMA, well, the sub-channels. Mm -hmm. For TDMA, time slots, mm -hmm. okay? So these are the things that, so for all of these, 
channel state information is important for sure and queue state is important and interference is important even for CDMA interference still there right mm -hmm. interference still there so when we allocate the resource the resource could be that we have a time slot or a frequency or power so sometimes uh, I have to do power adaptation or power allocation especially for CDMA as we said just to reduce the effect of near far effect remember mm -hmm. so we have to do some power allocation for this type uh, so these factors can be time varying definitely each one of these factors will change over time which will force us to apply the optimization to apply this optimization dynamically throughout the time and because because of this variability throughout the time, we have to do that frequently at different time slots. So we, in other words, we have to run the optimization problem, okay, repeatedly over time. So every, every now and then, we have to see the channel state changes. So we have to change, like for example, in the previous, in the previous scenario that we talked about, even though it's FDMA or, yani, sorry, it's, it's one channel, and we're trying to allocate the power to the different users, right? Mm -hmm. But still, we allocate the power based on the gain, right? We allocate the power, and the gain incorporates the channel state. Yeah, and this channel state changes over time. Mm -hmm. So we have to run this optimization problem every now and then because the, 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 the channel state changes. Mm -hmm. So in the standards, they talk about a specific frame and they call this channel a block fading channel, which means that the assumption is the channel does not change throughout this entire frame. So for an entire frame, we, we, we run the optimization and then we allocate the resources accordingly. And then in the next frame, we have to run the optimization again because the channel state may change, the queue state may change, the interference may change. So we have to run it again and again and again, okay? So, all these factors are taken into consideration or either individually or combined, right? Mm -hmm. So we can consider channel state only, queue state only, interference only, or we can combine the three of them or two of them or something like this, depending on the system that we're studying. Here we're talking about the objective. So we are trying to maximize, we are trying to allocate these resources to achieve a certain target. This is our target. The target could be that we want to maximize the throughput, in which case we are opportunistic. We don't care about fairness, right? Or we are trying to minimize the delay. Also in that case, we'll be opportunistic. Or we try to minimize the number of drop packets. In that case, we have to calculate the probability of packet drop if we were to assign a certain resource to the channel. And this dropping probability is a function of the channel state. Doctor, the throughput is centered the number of... Uh, Maximizing the throughput. So it's the same, right? Same what? Same. Minimizing the number of drop packets. N uh, well, minimizing the number of drop packets based, is based on... Think about the current state. If I were to allocate this time slot to you, what is the probability that you will send the packet correctly? We calculate this probability for all the users and then we assign the one, we assign the resource to the one that will give us the maximum probability. Okay. Maximum probability of success, which means the lowest probability of error. Okay? The throughput, the throughput here, if we talk about the throughput as packets per second then it's in a way it's the same but if we talk about the fact that if I if I, if I allocate this resource to you you will be able to send with a rate which is RI and this rate is a function of the channel state and remember that this rate might change depending on the modulation scheme that you use because mm -hmm. depending on your channel state you can change from 16 quam to 64 quam for example which means that you can send with higher rate because your channel is very good. So you can increase the modulation, in which case 
you can maximize the rate. Okay. So the throughput here might change depending on the the, the modulation scheme and so on and so forth, and um, <clears throat> we allocate the resource to the one that will give us the maximum throughput. This objective is, is kind of interesting, maximizing the network lifetime. That's, well, this, this is very tricky. Well, first of all, we have to agree on how we define the network lifetime. What is the network lifetime? Is it, is it really, well, th this is, this is uh, uh, very descriptive, especially for wireless sensor networks or for networks with uh, very uh, critical uh, energy consumption. So, for example, if you're talking about a mobile phone or a sensor node that loses its power, if it loses its power, then it cannot communicate. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that the network lifetime has ended? Well, it depends. So we have to we have we have to first define what network lifetime is. Is it when the first node in the network dies? then we say that this is the lifetime of the network. So starting from time zero until one node dies, then this is the network lifetime. Well, maybe, the, maybe this node has died, but the network's still there. So maybe this is not an accurate definition. Okay, so the other definition is... Until the last node. Until the last node dies. Well, this is an extreme case. Okay? So, so we have to agree on network life, and that's why maximizing network lifetime is a very tricky objective, very tricky objective. So you have to define, imagine that you are not only trying to define, you are trying to quantify that. Mm -hmm. To quantify this is, is very tricky. Mm -hmm. Because there is a very complicated definition for network lifetime, is when you don't have proper communication between the nodes. When does this happen? Well, you could end up with N nodes, but none of these nodes can communicate to each other. When? When the range between them is too far that they cannot communicate together. Because in order for them to be able to communicate, some nodes have to be in the middle to act as relays to, to carry the traffic from one node to another. So if this node dies, then these two nodes cannot communicate. Okay? So this is a very complicated definition. All right, so uh, uh, luckily we don't have to quantify this as part of the course. <laughs> this is the good news. So I, I'm just giving you that, you know, some hints, but we don't really have to do that. But this is, this is very frequently studied in the case of sensor networks and, uh, and manets, mobile ad hoc networks. When the nodes are mobile, so when do we say that the network lifetime is this? Mm -hmm. Okay? So some people, they define if you, the, the, the definition that I just said, if, you, if, if none of the nodes can communicate to each other, that doesn't mean that the node has died. Well, there are still some nodes there, but they cannot communicate with each other. Yeah, or the communication limited level like well, they, well you can put some threshold on that they mm -hmm. cannot communicate uh, uh, with a rate more than this mm -hmm. then. then this means that technically they are not communicating mm -hmm. okay yeah. or another definition when the network splits into two this means that you have a, you have one network mm -hmm. okay the network splits into two networks that none of these nodes can communicate with these nodes. Mm -hmm. But they can communicate within one subnetwork. Mm -hmm. Some people, they, they take this definition. What I'm trying to say is that when you, when, you, when you work on network lifetime examples, you have to first define what network lifetime is. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because any of the definitions that I, uh, I just mentioned could be used for network lifetime. But it's, 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 it's a very tricky thing to work on. Or minimizing power consumption, which is minimizing power consumption here means that, well, if I'm communicating with a node that's very close to me, I don't need to use the same transmission power when I communicate with a node that's very far away, right? So I can allocate the power 
based on the location of the node, in which case I use the, the exact power that I need to communicate based on the location of the node. This way, over time, I can minimize the power consumption. And in that case, minimizing the power consumption for a node increases the lifetime of this particular node. But the lifetime of a node is different from the lifetime of a net. Mm -hmm. This is obvious, right? Mm -hmm. A lifetime of a node, when, when the node dies, there is no other definition. But the, li the lifetime of the network, mm -hmm. we don't know. It has a bunch of different definitions. So these are the, 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 some of the objectives that I can use when I allocate the, uh, the resources. So now, next, next slide. So now... Doctor, consumption uh, for a node nearby, how come, uh, first we should uh, determine how far the node is from? Right. Uh -huh. So, so for this type of examples, I may have to incorporate some location base, mm -hmm. calculate the distance. Mm -hmm. So because I have the path loss model, mm -hmm. so based on that I can estimate the amount of power that I need. Mm -hmm. And then allocate per node, allocate what is the, uh, the optimal transmission power. Because if I use, if I use if I use transmission power, which is higher than the optimum, then I'm wasting. If I use lower, I may not be able to communicate properly. So what is the best power okay, to facilitate this communication, given that the node is here, versus here, versus here? Versus, okay. Okay, clear? Yeah. All right, so resource allocation for TDMA systems um, so here time is divided into time slots and the question is which user to get which time slot at any point in time yeah. so as we said we can assign it to the best channel users in which case we are very optimistic but this will create some problems this user will, will, uh, will have all the shares all the other users may starve the queues of these other users might fill up and they start drop packets and, and so on and so forth. There's no way for us to provide any quality of service, neither quantitative nor qualitative. So we cannot, we cannot do that. So next slide. So here, what we could do is that maybe we could try to be extremely fair, in which case we say, OK, this resource or this time slot to user one, this time slot to user two, three, and so on. So this is the ultimate fairness. There is no, there is no mechanism which is fairer than round, round robin. Mm -hmm. So round robin is completely fair. And because it's completely fair, it's not necessarily the optimal. And, it, and in many cases, it's actually way suboptimal. OK? So allocation based on the CSI, this is the other extreme. So if we allocate round robin, we are completely fair, but we're not in any way close to being opportunistic. Allocation based on CSI, this is totally opportunistic, but it's not fair. So next, so what we could try to do is that we can incorporate some queue states. Okay, so allocation based on queue states. So when the bits arrive to different queues at different rates, the queue state need to be uh, collected at the central point, and then the central point will, dis will decide to give the resource to the, e to the user with the maximum size of queue. Mm -hmm. So in which case, we're trying to balance out the size, regardless of whether some users may have very high rate traffic, and some users may have very low rate traffic. But this will allow the, uh, the base station to maintain all the queues in a, in a balanced way, mm -hmm. even if that user has higher traffic than the other. So that's what this tries to do. Having one user more traffic than the other, then uh, we will still have some uh, starvation so at some point, like the users that don't have many fast descent. Yeah, if this user is actually you know generating <clears throat> more and more and more and more traffic all the time, mm -hmm. creating bursts, then this user will, will make the other user stop. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Because always he will have the higher queue state. You will have the higher queue size all the time. So maybe we can have some if statements like, 
But I mean like... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so that, so instead, next slide, so instead, one, one, one allocation, uh, one utility function, which seems to be very, very powerful, really, in that particular case, is this. So, we can use a utility function, which is the instantaneous rate. If I were to give the time slot to this user, and this, remember, this incorporates the current channel state. Because the rate is function of the current channel state. Right? So if I give the channel, if I give the resource to the one with the maximum instantaneous rate, so this is opportunistic. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And instead, what this utility function tries to do is to divide the instantaneous rate by the average rate mm -hmm. based on assigning previous resources in history. So what does this mean? This means that imagine if alpha and beta are ones, okay? Mm -hmm. which, is the, which is the third case or the last case down in the last line here, okay? So if alpha and beta are one, this will give us the proportional first scheduling, mm -hmm. half. This means that if a user has a maximum instantaneous rate, okay, then if, if, if the capital RI is not there, I will give the resources to this user all the time. But what will happen is, if I did that for the last, two or three, uh, two or three time slots, what will happen? His average rate will increase. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? When his average rate increases, mm -hmm. this ratio or the benefit starts to decrease. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Which will allow me to, uh, to get discouraged. So it's always based on this ratio, not based on instantaneous or average. So based on the instantaneous RI, which incorporates the channel state and the average based on the last uh, uh, time slots. So this RI, this capital RI, by the way, can be the average using the last, for uh, uh, 100 time slots, or maybe since the beginning of the system. So RI here, Ri, capital Ri, equals 1 over n, i equals 1 to n, the instantaneous Ri in the previous time slot. Again, Ri, capital Ri equals... To sorry, uh, sorry, Ri d equals... The small or okay. This is t, sorry. Hmm? Just like this. So um, Ri equals the instantaneous Ri at time t, whereas time t, this t, is from 1 to n. And n is the current. n is the, is the or n is the, yani is, the, is, the, is, the, is just the previous time slot. OK? Or we can say R I equal okay. Uh, uh, let's say this is T, and this is one over T. <coughs> so starting from the beginning. So this is the. Uh, so this is, this is small T. From one to capital T. capital T, and where T, capital T is the current time, mm -hmm. okay? The current or the previous? The previous one, the previous one, okay. okay? So, which means that if I, uh, if I, uh, at the first time slot, the first time slot, so capital RI for all the users is, is, is not there. Mm -hmm. And I base this, the, the deci decision based on the instantaneous RI, which means that I give the resource 
to the user with the, with the maximum instantaneous RI. That's it. Mm -hmm. In the next time slot, then I calculate the average for all the users. So in the next time slot, R, uh, the capital RI equals all the previous RIs for that user divided by the number. If I give more resources to that user, after some time, his average starts to, e to increase. When the average starts to increase, this ratio starts to decrease okay. over time. Okay? Making the base station more discouraged to give more resources to that user. In other words, the benefit of assigning more resources to that user starts to decrease. Mm -hmm. It's in a way similar to the log, right? Mm -hmm. For the TDMA system, this this is actually equivalent to the log case. I could actually do the same thing only by uh, saying log RI, log, log capital RI. And this could, could do some uh, um, uh, uh, proportional fairness as well. So if, if beta is zero, and alpha is 1, this is the opportunistic case. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, alpha is 0 and beta is 1, this means that we're not taking the current channel state into consideration mm -hmm. at all. Yes. Right? So we're basing the decision only on the average rate, which is technically something like round, round robin, close to round robin. Why? Because we're not opportunistic in any way. Because the more we incorporate the current channel state into our decision, the, poor, the more opportunistic we become. Right? So if we incorporate the current channel state into the decision, we become more and more opportunistic. So these are the three cases here. If, uh, if alpha... Uh, uh, is, is zero and beta is one, this is close to round robin. Although I would not call it completely round robin. Why? Because it depends on how the average looks like. Mm -hmm. Because uh, randomly, the channel state will have very small effect in that case. But definitely, the current channel state does not have an effect. Okay? If alpha is one, and beta is zero, this is the maximum network throughput, which is equivalent to the scenario that we talked about. And if alpha is one and beta is one, this is the scenario that we talked about, and this has proportional fair schedule. Can I assign any decimal value or zero and one? You know, you can, you can. Just put alpha two and beta one. This means that you are giving more importance to the current channel state more than the historical average. So in your study, you can actually uh, check the effect of changing alpha and beta. And this is very easy to, uh, to, to simulate, by the way. This, exa this example is very easy to simulate. So you have time slots. So time slot one, time slot two. And you have n different users. So if I give this to the user, that of course you have to generate the channel state to the users based on the average white Gaussian noise. The, 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 the model. Modulation. Uh, the, no, modulation, you can, be, you can fix the modulation for all of them. So based on the channel state, you can just estimate the, the rate based on the Shannon equation, very easy. Based on Shannon equation. Assuming all other parameters are fixed. The modulation is fixed, the bandwidth is fixed, every, everything else is fixed. Then you calculate the, 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 the throughput or the actual rate for that user depending solely on the channel state of that user. That's it. This is for uh, TDMA or OFDMA? TDMA. This is for TDMA. So I, I can do TDMA? Yes, you can do it in TDMA. Yeah. And then you can measure the effect of alpha and beta. So if you change alpha and change beta, what, what, what would be the effect on the rate? You can try for a different number of users. And <clears throat> so next slide, we talk about the multi-hop 
multi-hub networks. So all of what we talked about before is based on the fact that we have one base station, a centralized node, and a group of nodes, which is actually a straightforward case. Because you have a centralized controller, one who has control to, uh, to, a, to distribute the resources to all the nodes based on these criteria that we talked about. When we talk about multi-node communication, in the next slide, when we talk about multi-node, multi-hub communication, it becomes even more complicated. So resource allocation becomes more challenging in this, in, 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 in this case. Mm -hmm. Why? Because just the fact that you allocate the resources on one, on one hub, it doesn't mean that the same resources are, are allocated in the other hub. So you actually allocate on one link, and the other link does not have the same amount of resources, in which case the node in the middle will have to, uh, to account for this, will have to store these packets, which means that the queue state might increase. So, uh, uh, so the end-to-end the end-to-end -end communication is actually dependent on the resources that you allocate and each link. Mm -hmm. The other thing here is that for multi-hub communication, there is, it's very hard to have a centralized controller because the, the network is distributed in nature. So if you go to the next slide, so so you have a very uh, uh, tricky interference constraints in the case of multi-hub communication. Why? Because you have distributed links, right? So these distributed links will interfere with each other. And that's why the, the, the star topology of having one base station or one centralized or a group of nodes it's always easier to study and easier to guarantee certain resource allocation and certain quality of service. When it comes to multi-hub communication, it's very, very challenging because the, the links itself are distributed. The links are, di and there is no centralized control. So these links, they interfere with each other because remember we said that if you have, if you have one node communicating to one node, and here there is another node communicating to another node. These nodes, they interfere with each other, right? right? Because whatever is sent from here, it goes here. And whatever is sent from here, it goes, it goes here and it goes here, right? So there is certain level of interference. If, the, if always the communication goes through one point, which is the master node or the base station or, 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 so this allows us to be in control. This allows us to be, to be in control because the base station sends in the downlink in a, in a more controlled way. So it, know, it sends so that it can manage this interference. It sends to one node at a time. So when I send to this node, all the other nodes are not, are not affected because they, they, on, they only communicate with the master. Only in the uplink, we need to resolve the interference that we don't have two nodes send at the same time or something like this. Or... If you use CDMA, we can. If you use CDMA, we can, right? We can use different codes. And in that case, we need to uh, account for power allocation in order to uh, make the near-far effect and so on and so forth. So we know how to deal with the star topology. It's, it's much easier. And even though we have found that it's very challenging in terms of also achieving this criteria. Here... Everything is distributed in nature. So we don't even have a base station. So this makes it much more challenging. Okay? Um, so when we have multi-hub communication, so which link do we activate? And when we, when we say activate, this, this means that we can have packets flowing from this node to this node. Because in multi-hub communication, we have different routes. Right. So even routing becomes an issue now. Right? So should we send the packet this way or this way? So, okay. So in a way, we were able to deal with routing as part of the wired network. But remember, 
here, when we talk about routing, we have to incorporate interference, right? Mm -hmm. And all the resource allocation problems that we talked about, in addition to the routing on multi-hub wireless networks. Here we talk about wireless networks. Mm -hmm. Let alone, if we talk about the fact that these nodes are mobile. That's another story. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very challenging environment. Um, also let alone the fact that we need to provide some quality of service in this sporadic environment. When we talk about multi-hub communication, uh, and nodes will have some quality of service requirements, how can we guarantee delay or, or throughput or something like this in such a lousy environment where uh, you have multi-hub communication, you don't have a centralized controller, and all the nodes are distributed and they interfere with each other. So how can you provide some guarantees on the quality of service in such uh, a distributed environment? So this is a very tricky uh, environment to work on. So it's hard. So uh, so for, for the multi-app communication, it's very hard. Sometimes we can say, okay, so even though it's a multi-app communication, but we will try to use one of the nodes as a centralized controller, which means that all the nodes will have to send their information to this node. Mm -hmm. And then this node will kind of run the, 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 the optimization problem and allocate the resources not just on one hub, on all the hubs. So you can imagine the amount of information that you need to collect from all these nodes. And the amount of estimation that you have to do when you activate two nodes, what is the amount of interference from one node to another? Because we did not have to deal with this when we talked about wired networks, because someone might say, so we have, o, uh, we have um, uh, OSPF, we have EAGREP, routing protocols. Mm -hmm. That takes into consideration the delay on the link to allocate the route end to end. Well, but here, remember, when, we, when you activate certain links, they interfere with each other. So the estimation of the amount of delay and throughput on each of these links depends on all the other links. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so when you activate certain links, the topology changes. And based on the new topology, the effect of interference changes. And you need to allocate the resources of the, of the channel in this, in this environment. Actually, my PhD was about this. In my PhD, I studied minutes when the nodes are mobile. And you need to allocate end-to-end -end resources in multi-hub minutes when the nodes are mobile. Mm -hmm. So in that case, um, well, what, what I tried to do is that I tried to, to, to divide the resource allocation problem between the source node, which is the one that initiates the session end-to-end, -end, and the core nodes. Okay? The uh, core nodes uh, is, the core nodes, the core nodes, no, 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 in a distributed way. The core nodes will have to work hand-in-hand -in, -hand in a distributed way to divide the, 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 the bandwidth of the entire channel between them. But when, you, when they do this, they do this based on the local information that they have. And then this local information will, will allow them to, 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 to take certain decisions. But this decision is not necess necessarily optimal. Mm -hmm. So they calculate, they estimate something, and then they send it to the source. The source will gather this information and will compare what they have estimated based on what they have actually achieved. Mm -hmm. And based on the two, the two pieces of information, they, they update. They run certain optimization, and they change the amount of resources allocated in the next time slot. And they keep, try they keep trying to do this in an iterative way until 
they reach to a state that it's supposedly optimal. Okay? But even this, really, it requires exchange of information on a constant basis, which is, you know, it's enormous. Enormous amount of information have to be exchanged back and forth between these nodes. We didn't have to deal with this when we talk about wired networks, because in wired networks there's no interference. So allocating resources across the pass is, is very easy. But in wireless, it's, it's very, very uh, challenging. But these nodes are different nodes controlled by a gateway software, what are Some people, they take, they take this model, they try to, to say, okay, even though it's multi-hub communication, but I will deal with this as cluster type of communication. So between each group of nodes, I will allocate a cluster head. And this cluster head can be like nominated or elected or something like this. Or maybe designated, fixed. And that communication. And this one will act as the de facto base station between these group of nodes. Mm -hmm. OK? And if they want to communicate with other nodes in different clusters, then? Yes, they, well, it depends. The well, the they, they, have to, they have to communicate through the cluster head, in which case I'm dictating that they have to go through the cluster head. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to essentially do is that I'm trying to lay out the base station model or the, the, the star topology model over wireless sensor networks or manets. So I'm dictating that. Some people, they took that route because they found that um, any other way, it's very hard. And some people like myself, they took the more challenging case where it doesn't have to be cluster based. I will do it in a distributed way. So in a local area, I used uh, Sysma CA DCF which is distributed. But then, the nodes will kind of estimate the, uh, uh, the, the amount of throughput that we get based on the Sysma CA. And then they send that to the source. And then the source will, will estimate something and send this. Back. And the source, what it does is that the source actually uses some utility for the end-to-end -end session. So I define a utility for the end-to-end -end session. Mm -hmm. So based on the estimated rates across the different links, what is the utility that I get? And then I calculate some kind of a price or the benefit based on the estimated uh, amount of resources assigned on each link. And then I try to update the resources based on this price, iteratively, over time, through the optimization. Until reaching your price, huh? hmm? Until reaching the price you set at the beginning. No, I'm trying, I'm tr no, 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 I'm trying to maximize all the benefits for the entire network. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to reach to the maximum. No, the price here, the price is, is defined locally, so based on the fact that if, if, if I assign these resources based on Sysma CA, what is the price? I actually divided the network into what they call cliques. Mm -hmm. Remember, clique, cliques yeah. is from graph theory. Yeah. And I calculate one price for the entire clique. Mm -hmm. And then this price, I send it to the, to the source, and the source will calculate the, the estimated utility based on this price, based on assi assigning, so if a session passes through like several cliques, what is the price here, what is the price here, what is the price here, I calculate all the prices, feed it back to the source, and then the source based on all these prices, it tries to estimate what is the amount of rate that I can get end to end, by, not, not just on one link, what is the rate that I can get end to end, because remember, the rate end to end is based on the bottleneck, because if you get here higher rate and get here low rate, Essentially, what you're sending is the low rate, not the high rate, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so based on assigning these prices on the different leagues, so you try to, to increase the lower rate and reduce the high rate so that you, you balance out across the, in all the cliques mm -hmm. throughout the session end to end. And then the source will have to, from this price, calculate the estimated rate and then send, feed it back to the, 
to the different cliques. And the, the, the different cliques will, will, will get from this whether they need to increase or decrease, whether they need to redistribute the resources amongst the, the different nodes locally or not. And this, this process has to go back and forth for several iterations until you get to a stable state. So this way you can uh, uh, reach to a maximum utility for the entire network through some iterative process um, based on some maximization, which is done in a, dis in a distributed way. But the complexity of this is really high. It's really, really high. That's why many people, they opt to just remove that and just use simple technique like cluster. Mm -hmm. Once you think in the clustered environment, things will become very easy because we know how to deal with this. So within one cluster, we know. We can apply all the yeah, techniques. In terms of complexity, it will reduce the complexity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's another story. But anyway, we know and we, I hope we appreciate now that the case of multi-hub communication is much more complicated given the fact that even for the star topology, it's complicated enough. But when we talk about multi-hub communication, it's even more complicated. After, after many iterations, <coughs> what are we finding out to find the utility function? Like hmm? In uh, different node, com distributed node communication, uh, we did several iterations uh, by solving the click problems. Right. And then uh, after that, we get some weighting factor. Uh, what are we getting, uh, ultimate output of the iteration, what are we getting to put it into the network? Like? What are we getting? After the iterations, what well, value are we getting? First, first, you calculate the price. Well, you calculate the amount of benefit that you get from uh, taking a certain share in a distributed environment on the link. From all these links, assuming that all these links are having like a clique. A clique is like maximum connected. Mm. Okay, what is the price of the entire group mm. or the entire clique? Mm. And entire clique... Is, uh, is, is actually represented by nodes which are in the same communication range, which means that these nodes will interfere with each other. Mm -hmm. This means that technically, mm -hmm. the capacity of the channel is divided between these links. Mm -hmm. Remember that some of these nodes might be part of two clicks mm -hmm. or three clicks. Mm -hmm. In which case, the, their price changes on the membership in different clicks. It's a very complicated uh, any problem, okay? All based on the, the nodes that are participating in this clique. So there is a, a price for a link, a price for a node, a price for a clique, mm -hmm. depending on what interference it gets from other cliques. Mm -hmm. So all this have to be mm -hmm. defined iteratively. Mm -hmm. Then, based on that, you calculate the price for a session end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. A price for a session is the price for all the links, and for each link, the price is uh, 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 based on how many cliques this link is part of. It's a very complicated process. Yeah. So we don't have to, yeah, I mean, but it, it's, it's, at the end, it was, um, it was systematic based on the optimization problem that we talked about. It's just that you need to define your, your, your utility and basically, the utility function was log logarithm of r. The same utility function, logarithm of r, which is proportional, which uses proportional fairness. But this r is the end-to-end -end r, not the instantaneous r based on time slot or something. No, this is the end-to-end. -end. And in fact, in my case, it was even multicast. It was not unicast, which means that a source is sending to multiple destinations. End-to-end -end R means? End-to-end uh, -end what? End-to-end -end R. This R was not instantaneous, but end-to-end -end means? Yeah, end-to-end, end-to-end, because you have, you have, you have a, a source oh. is sending to a node, is sending to a node, is sending to a node, until reaching, until reaching the destination. Okay. So R is the end-to-end -end R. It's not like R here or R here or R here. It's R end-to-end. -end. R one plus R two plus R two. No, 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 no. no. Is this really the case? No, 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 it's not the summation. Well, it's actually the, the, the minimum rate across each of these links, across any of these links. So, for example, 
if, well, you're trying to send traffic across this path, right? So if this is like three, and this is seven, and this is two, what is the end-to-end -end rate? It's two. It's technically two. The rate is a bottleneck metric. Okay? What you are saying applies for the delay. The end-to-end -end delay is the delay here, plus the delay here, plus the delay here. But the rate is a bottleneck, which means that the end-to-end -end delay is the minimum, uh, sorry, the end-to-end -end, uh, rate is the minimum rate on any of the lengths end-to-end. -to -end. It, it chooses the shortest rate length. Like the smallest one. The smallest one. It's, 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 uh, it's like when you, when you flow like some water in a pipe. If this pipe thickness changes across the end to end, so technically the flow rate is based on the bottleneck link, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because the bottleneck link mm -hmm. is the maximum flow rate that you can pass through this pipe, mm -hmm. right? So if it gets high and then it gets low and then it gets high again, well, the effective rate is the one in the middle because this is the bottleneck. The delay is different. The delay is the summation. Because the end-to-end -end delay is technically the delay achieved here plus the delay achieved here plus the delay achieved here. Okay?